Hello, and welcome to the Baird Trust Large Cap Equity Third Quarter Portfolio Recap. My name is John Watkins, and I'm a co-portfolio manager on the strategy. Jumping right into performance, the table at the top of this slide shows our performance track record. You can see in the quarter, our portfolio declined 3.4% gross of fees and 3.7% net of fees compared to the 4.9% decline for the S&P 500. And then for the year-to-date period, our portfolio declined 23.8% gross and 24.5% net compared to a 23.9% decline for the S&P 500. The bottom half of this slide shows the individual companies that were our top and bottom contributors for both the quarter and the year-to-date period. I'd like to highlight a few things here. First, in the year-to-date period, our performance versus the S&P 500 faced a substantial headwind due to the fact that we have no holdings in the energy, utilities, or consumer staple sectors, which were the three best performing sectors in the S&P 500. This negatively impacted our relative performance by about 2.6 percentage points. We've previously noted that we have been unable to find any investment opportunities that meet our business management and price criteria in these sectors. That fact is a headwind to performance so far this year. However, it has actually been a tailwind to performance over the last five years, uh, specifically the energy sector. As a reminder, our goal is to own the best businesses we can find for very long periods of time, not to try and figure out which sectors will be hot in any given year. Given today's stock declines, it's important to take a step back and remember that our objective is to outperform the S&P 500 over full market cycles. So we place much more emphasis on our 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25-year investment performance. Over each of these time periods, we've experienced significant uncertainty and volatility, several bear markets, a pandemic, stock market corrections, a global financial crisis, among many other scary things. Yet even including this year's losses, our portfolio's gross and net performance has been outstanding over these long-term time periods. Finally, when looking at year-to-date individual company performance near the bottom of this slide, it can be jarring to see substantial 30 to 40% price declines for some stocks in the portfolio. But as we said before, we believe that stock prices are much more volatile than the fundamentals of the underlying business. So some great examples of this would be to highlight our three bottom contributors for the year, Home Depot, Microsoft, and Alphabet all down over 30% so far this year. However, all three of these saw huge stock price increases in 2021. Home Depot was up 56%, Microsoft was up 51%, and Alphabet was up 65%. Stock prices are driven by many more factors than simply business fundamentals. Last year, optimism reigned and pushed prices higher, and this year, pessimism has taken the place of optimism. Our view is that stock prices don't tell us much about what's happening with the business. For that, we look to things like revenue growth, margin expansion or contraction, uh, earnings and free cash flow changes. Stock price gyrations should not be used to inform you, rather they should be used to serve you when they create substantial mismatches between price and intrinsic value. Moving on, this slide shows our recent portfolio changes. Uh, We've not made any changes so far in 2022, but our research efforts remain highly active. Prices of companies on our watch list have come down substantially, so our efforts to find new investment opportunities continue daily. This slide shows our current sector weightings as well as our top 10 holdings at the end of the quarter. Uh, We strongly believe that in order to outperform the S&P 500 over time, we must look different than the S&P 500. You can see from both the sector allocation uh, on the left and the top holdings on the right, which make up 62% of the portfolio, that we do, in fact, look much different than the benchmark. And then finally, just a few big picture comments. This year has been a tough one for equity investors. Stocks are down. We're in a more prolonged bear market than we've seen in quite some time. And there are many macroeconomic issues to worry about. So these fears are normal, 
But as we wrote in our October Baird Trust market commentary, our view is that the future is not knowable. The last three years really served to emphasize this point as much of what has transpired was not predicted by anyone. We use this belief as a starting point in our investment process. We build the portfolio with the knowledge that the future is unpredictable and that there will be many surprises, both negative and positive. Because of this, we try to partner with businesses and management teams that can endure whatever external environment is thrown at them. This means companies with strong competitive advantages, low levels of debt, and that generate lots of free cash flow. In fact, these are often the businesses that not only survive the tough times, but actually grow stronger through market and economic downturns as weaker competitors struggle to survive. These companies emerge in a stronger position whenever the tough times subside and the next expansion begins. We know bear markets are difficult. Uh, watching portfolio values decline is not enjoyable. However, bear markets are a common occurrence in the equity markets, and economic slowdowns and recessions are bound to happen from time to time. Importantly, with the stock price declines we have seen so far this year, our portfolio of companies now trades at a wider discount to our estimated intrinsic value than we've seen in many years. So while this tells us nothing about near-term stock price performance, it is our belief that for the long-term investor, large discounts to value often correlate to attractive future investment returns. History has shown that no bear market or economic con contraction has lasted forever. Uh, while we don't believe anyone can consistently predict the exact timing, eventually a new bull market and a new economic expansion will begin. That does it for our Q3 portfolio recap. Uh, we look forward to reporting our Q4 results to you in January. Thank you so much for your time.